Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madam, and this is the recap review for Queen Sugar. So before I get started with the recap review, I just want to go on ahead and do a free promotion for a black owned business that I purchased these picks from. I know it has been months, probably sometime in the beginning of the year when I purchased these. I've wanted picks ever since before I even became natural. And when I was having the conversation with myself, as far as what items I wanted to add to my arsenal of tools that I use on my hair, picks came up again. And since I'm in a mindset now of let me get black owned businesses a try again, it's been some time because I have been disappointed in the past. Like when I was in college, I would go and try to support and it was terrible quality, but you want to jack the prices up. Like, no, I if I'm going to pay all this money, I'm going to need the quality to be A1. But anyway, this is a black owned business that I found, Neo Curly. I ended up purchasing this one first and then I purchased this one. And it's only because for whatever reason at that time, PayPal was like, oh, if you, uh, if you purchase something from this company within this time frame, we will put five to $7 or however much it was at the time for that towards that purchase. And I'm like, the combs ain't but $10 or, or how much they are, $10, $12. And they are very sturdy. They get through my hair like my hair is, it, it, it be doing the most. It be doing the most. I don't have any product in my hair right now. I just freshly washed it. Um, I am going to be doing an experiment later on. And that is why I look like this. That's why I have this wet shirt on. It's part of my process as far as when I do what I do to my hair. So that's that. But yeah, um, my hair keeps shrinking because it's drying a little bit, but it is still wet in this moment. So it just is what it is. My hair in the front be doing the most. I will talk about that in the next uh, recap review. Some of y'all already know, but I'm going to go over it again very, very briefly. And it ties into the recap review. So it is what it is. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. So first of all, this episode was very, very amazing it hit home for me because as, as i've told y'all before over the years that i always felt like this show was going to be something that i was going to be really into especially if they were able to tap into how black farmers operate and the things that they go through and when i tell you this stuff has been dead on stuff that my father himself has gone through and my grandmother and my grandfather and other people in my family who have farmed you know what i'm saying so Let's go ahead and get into it. So the episode starts out with Charlie getting ready for a virtual interview. And this is going to be a nationally syndicated interview that she's having with Gail King. Now, they're in the process of prepping right now. She's ready on her end. But Gail King and the people over there at CBS, they got to get everything ready. They're going to interview her because they have noticed everything that she's been doing in the community in Louisiana. So... They end up coming back to her after they get everything set up on their end and they were talking to her and they said, we noticed everything that you've been doing while the pandemic was going on and how y'all's parish was the one that was least impacted by the COVID cases. Y'all had the fewest cases because of how fast y'all were able to react and all that. So they talking, all that stuff is going well. I don't know if this was anything that Charlie knew was going to happen, but in my opinion, I feel like she was somewhat side, you know, what, what is it? Blind? Is it side blinded? Y'all, I feel like I'm blind side. I'm like, I was like, I'm having a dyslexic moment and I don't even have dyslexia. <laughs> okay. So I was like, wait a minute. But yeah, she was blindsided when Gail King was like, okay, so there has been uh, rumblings and rumors that you and your ex-husband are back together and they put a picture up of them talking about they've been seen out together and all this other stuff and they wanted to know if the rumors were true and she was like yes we are working on things we are a couple again and they even made a <laughs> they made a point to show how Charlie found out this man was cheating and doing the most and when she ended up you know getting she was on the court. Y'all remember that episode when she was on the basketball court and she was sitting it all. Oh my gosh. I was like, no, y'all didn't pull the beautiful, beautiful bean footage on there. They don't wear all. So it's like, she looked like she was a, a little bit blindsided, but she handled it. And she was like, yeah, we together. And you know, 
we working through things. He is showing me that he really means business. And we don't expect, you know, he doesn't expect for the public to forgive him. But I have forgiven him. I trust that he's going to do right by me. It is what it is. So they have they, they, they conversation. And, you know, she was like, right now I'm in D.C., because there are some meetings that are happening because they are trying to, you know, see what's going what's going to be hitting for as far as the political scene and her moving up that corporate ladder, if you will, <laughs> like a Senate seat, possibly. So, you know, the interview went well, even though she kind of looked like she got signed blindsided. See, I'm still trying to say it. So, yeah, y'all, I was like, OK, I, I didn't know how she was going to take it, but it went well. So Hollywood is taking the little boy Gabriel out to fish. His interaction with this little boy, it is amazing. Like, I get so happy when I see him interacting with this little boy. The mama is appreciative of it. She was like, he smiles so much. He is so happy and all this. This is going to be the little boy's first time fishing, all of that. So Hollywood is very happy that he could teach this boy how to fish. He want to know if he'll be able to catch something. He was like, I don't know. The little boy looked like he was going to get sad for a second. And then Hollywood was like, I think you're going to catch a lot of fish. Hollywood is a whole mood. So I understand the happiness within. So we see Prosper at the house. And the daughter, Billy, is there. And she's trying to take care of him. And she was like, oh, I made some salmon patties and some grits. Y'all, I got to go get my um water right now. But... I was like, ma'am, uh, I, I, I don't eat grits on plates. When I have partake, taken, taketh, and all of that, whenever I partake of grits, they ain't sitting on a plate. Like, she sat it on the plate and, like, propped it up. And I was just like, ma'am, I feel like them grits nasty. Ain't got a drop of salt. Ain't got a piece of butter. What is going on? I don't even... I even trust them salmon patties and i don't even care for salmon patties like that like i got to be like starving and ain't got no other way of having a source of food to enter into my body for me to take that i, I ain't never been here for salmon y'all i don't like salmon i don't like it at all i just don't i don't like tilapia never been here for those um so yeah that food did not look good i don't know if she was trying to make the healthier version of it but no nah. uh he was like um i'm not very hungry I'll take some coffee. So she was like, daddy, you got to eat whatever, whatever conversation came up where she was like, I have a nurse coming in and you know, she tried to make it seem like she was going to talk to him about it. He was like, I don't need no help. She was like, I've noticed that you've been struggling to like take care of some personal areas. And you know, I think it'll be good. At least let them come by for a couple of hours. If not, at least half a day, let them come in for at least four hours. So he was like, I am not struggling. I still know how to feed and clothe myself and bathe myself. But he was he he promised to go ahead and let the situation happen. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say right now. So anyway, Violet is uh, is 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 helping that family, and I love to see it. Uh, I love how Violet is changing for the better, and I was very worried for her. Because I I was I understand that she's going through things medically. I understand that she's going through things personally. But everybody's going through something. And the way that she has handled some people, it has made me like really sad at her. And I'm like, I understand that you the aunt. I understand that you are like somewhat of the matriarch of the family now, but you be doing too much. And that's why people are put off by you. And don't nobody have time. So anyway. I already told y'all about the interview. They keep on bringing this up. Okay, whatever. The interview happened. So, um, Ralph Angel is at the house. And he's in bed with Darla. And she's sitting there pregnant. Big, pretty and pregnant. And she was like, what are you thinking? And he was like, why you always ask me what I'm thinking? And she was like, because I want to know. So, he was like, you know, nothing really, you know. I always got you. You always got my back, no matter what we're going through, whatever, whatever. Man, all of a sudden, we hear, we hear trucks and things pulling up, sounding like work vehicles and things backing out and backing in. And I'm like, what is going on up in here? My first thought was, these people coming and repoing things. I'm thinking they coming and repoing farm equipment 
because maybe that was put down as collateral for him to get these loans. That's what I'm thinking it is. He done went outside. That raggedy sheriff that's in every episode, I can never catch what they say this man's name is. I feel like I might have to go on the little thing that says who all the castmates are for me to find out what his name on this show is supposed to be because I never can catch it. It starts with a G, I guess. But the way everybody say it, I can't never catch what they're saying. Anyway, he there. They got all kinds of other uh, law enforcement there and they have people who are going to excavate some things. And he's like, okay, what is the meaning of this while y'all here? And he's talking about, I got a warrant to be on the property. We are supposed to be able to look on various parts of the property because the book your sister put out is suggesting that there is a dead body on the premises and we aim to find it. And so he was like, ain't no truth to that book. So I don't know why you here. You ain't gonna find nobody. And my daddy didn't do nothing, whatever, whatever. He was like, well, it is what it is. We got this warrant. We gonna see about that. We go, we go see. So anyway, um, Prosper had talked with his daughter and they were trying to have a heart to heart, so to speak. And he was like, you know, enough about me. What's going on with you? I thought you and the old boy was all right or whatever. So she was like, you know, it's kind of hard or whatever. And I don't really have nobody to talk to about what I've been going through. And so he was like, well, have you talked to Nova? You know, what's going on with y'all? Y'all used to be really close. And she was like, yeah, I've spoken with her, but we are not close like we used to be. She was, because he was like, that was your best friend. What you talking about? What you mean? Child, a mess. They end up meeting up again later on. And um, she was like, I just wanted to have a, a second half of this conversation with you because I wasn't really finished the first time. I felt some type of way because everybody believed the lie that was happening. I was an 18 year old student in school and this man made me feel like he saw me. He made me feel like I was special and I was entertaining him because he was giving me the attention that I wanted. Once I realized what he was trying to do, I got away from him. So no sexual situation ever went down. But uh, what's the name? Billy Dale, whatever Dale. Jimmy Dale sat up there and lied and was like, yeah, I got all up and through them guts. It's like, why are you 30 some years old claiming and going around proclaiming that you have had sex with an 18 year old? Why? And you had a whole wife at the house. I don't understand that. It's the stupidity for me. Anyway, Micah is at the school and um, he was talking to that dude who y'all, I am waiting to see if they're going to do what I think they're going to do, which is introduce him as bisexual because he actually is into men in real life. Anyway, um, so the dude talking to him, they talking about, I think Mar Marcus Garvey and how Marcus Garvey was like, us black people, we do need to go back to Africa because they love trying to say that to us. But yeah, that's something that we really do need to do. Micah ain't trying to hear that because he like, I feel like I can go on ahead and do what I need to do as a black person and express myself and my culture from wherever I am. I ain't got to be in Africa like that. So after they finished with that conversation, he was like, man, I got to get out of here. I got to go see somebody. I need to go get something for this girl. The boy already knew that he had something going on with the teacher. So he looking mortified like, man, don't tell nobody. He was like, I ain't going to tell nobody none of that. Do what you do. Get you an A out the class and get you a little something too. And he was like, man, go ahead. So he saw my, he going to go get some flowers. The boy was trying to be like, do what you do, but represent. Like, don't get no cheap gift, whatever. Child, he went to the, uh, went to her office. And he was like, happy birthday. Brought her a nice little bouquet of flowers and things. She looking at him like, what, what, what are you doing here and why? Uh, I'm going to need for you to understand that this is strictly sex. This is strictly physical. I don't understand why you're bringing me flowers. He was like, oh, I understand that. So she was like, apparently you don't. I don't think we need to see each other anymore because you want more. You want me to meet family members and you want to dis discuss birthdays. Why are you trying to celebrate birthdays and things? If this just sex, we ain't got to do all that. Like your emotions are involved. So she ain't here for it. And she's like, we're not in your dorm room. This is, you know, you're in my office. This is my place of business. This is my job. Like, we can't do this no more. 
So, I mean, she ain't saying nasty or nothing like that, but it just was what it was. Child, Charlie was done with her interview and came back. Now, before her interview started, um, Davis sent her a text message telling her how proud of her that she is and, you know, to knock the uh, knock it out of the park. And he knows she's going to do well, whatever, whatever. So when she done, she get back to her hotel room. She walk in and she look around. It's balloons everywhere. Flowers, candles lit. It look real nice up in there. And then there's a card. She opens the card up. And the card basically says, you did an amazing job on your interview, whatever, whatever. And at the end, it said, I love you. So this helpful book picked up her phone and called him. He didn't answer. So she left him a message. And, you know, it was a little bit inspirational and sweet. And at the end of it, she said that she loved him too. I feel like if I'm not mistaken, because I, I kept wondering if I was mistaken in that. But to me, this clarified uh, as to whether or not she has told him since their divorce was finalized that she loves him again. So I think this was her first time actually saying I love you again after they haven't been together. Um, also, when she did her interview, I was glad that she said that he takes care of her child and the other child. Like the way she said, I was like, okay, I know that's right. And that we can't, you know, make up for what we did in the past. He's trying to move forward and do what he can as far as what's going on right now. I was like, okay, then I'm here for that. Okay, so Vi is at the spot. She's at her, you know, business. And y'all already know that Hollywood has taken the sun out to go fishing. So she's trying to find little things to do. She has been opening up and making cake boxes uh, all day. She was like, oh, I think you done made like a hundred cake boxes, baby. And so she was like, okay, well now I'm gonna go put these, you know, napkins in the thing. She was like, those napkin things don't need filling. The napkin holders don't need no more napkins. So she was like, okay, Miss Bible, what can I do for you? She was like, well, there is one thing you can do for me. Get a divorce from that no good husband. May she had a mask on and you could even see in her eyes that she was just like, oh, okay. Wow. Um, you could tell that she was fearful because it's like, she was like, oh, he gonna go crazy if I do that. I can't do that. He gonna go crazy, whatever, whatever. She was like, baby, I done been where you, where you are. It's gonna be hard. You gotta take baby steps, but you gotta get away from this man. You have to. She ended up giving her a card to a lawyer who has helped women who've been in shelters before and have helped them out of these situations. It's not gonna help. Like, let him go crazy all he want. I feel like she might actually have enough evidence against him to get him locked up. But these people are crazy. And it's like, please get a license to carry at this point and some mace and a knife and another tactical weapon of some sort. These people really be doing the most. These people really be out here doing the most. Especially when they realize that you don't want them no more. They act an entire fool because they like, can't nobody have you but me. Who are you? Anyway, y'all. So Hollywood is out there on the lake with the little boy and they having fun. And he starts to catch a fish. The little boy caught a fish. And he was so excited. Hollywood to put it in the little cooler. And the little boy was like, uh, I was wondering, can we, you know, release it back into the water so that it can live a happy life? Hollywood looked at the little boy. He was like, you know what? Yeah, we can do that. So he released it out there. He was like, you are special. Like, I've never met anybody like you who, you know, think like that. That's you. You you, you a good dude. Like, you, you gonna be something. So, I, I just love their relationship. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, Prosper. The nurse who gonna come to Prosper's house, she done came up in there. So, she was like, hi, Mr. Prosper. Uh, she was like, are you Prosper? Whatever, whatever. I forgot what Prosper's last name is. And he was like, yes, I am. And so he was like, have you been vaccinated? Because I have. She was like, yes, I've been vaccinated. He was like, okay, well, if you want to, if you feel comfortable enough, you can take your mask off. So she was like, okay, took her mask off. I already knew. I already knew. As soon as that woman took that mask off, Prosper was like, wait, wait, wait a minute now. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Prosper was so here for it. And they had been talking, getting to know one another and all this other stuff. 
So then we see them later on playing, you know, you know, they've done whatever they got to do. Take, he, you know, cause Billy has been having a hard time getting him to take his medicine as he should. And he'll take it when he wants to, if he going to take it. And instead of just taking it with his breakfast before he eat breakfast and just, you know, being on a schedule, he do what he want to do, child. So he ends up liking this woman. He liked this woman. It's obvious he liked this woman. He here for this woman. As soon as she took that mask off, I knew for sure, for certain. I was like, okay, then this is what it's fit to be. So they playing. He was like, okay, so uh, are you still ready to play like spades or bid whist? Like, are you a bid whist woman or what? She was like, I could take either, but just know you're going to get beat no matter which one you play. So, you know, they about, he about to deal the cards up and she start humming. I think it was a Tammy Terrell and Marvin Gaye song. He was like, what you know about Tammy Terrell and Marvin Gaye? She was like, what you mean what I mean? I got all of their records that they ever put out. I love Motown. These children don't know nothing about good music. They set it off. Ended up singing a song. What it was it? Ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low. I don't remember if that was the song they sung or not. Well, that she was singing. But anyway, she was singing a song, set it off. And he was getting his entire life. Oh my God, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I love, love y'all. I love to see it. So anyway, Micah in his room sulking in his feelings because this helper don't want him the way he want her. And the dude who I think is going to end up being his love interest of some sort, then rolled up and was like, what's going on with you? I thought you had, you know, some flowers to deliver. And he was like, and um, he was like, don't you want to go to this Kappa, this, what is it, AKA party? Some Delta party, one of these sororities, or I think it was a sorority, a Delta, uh, a Delta or an AKA party that was going to go on. He was like, oh, you want to go to this party? He was like, no, nah, man, I ain't in the mood. Then he find out that everything happened the way it happened with the heifer. And he was like, man, that's messed up. Oh, okay, then. So he tries to get him to get on the floor and meditate. He was like, man, I know, oh, I know I'm from California, but I don't know about all that. He was like, well, meditating helps me. And it helps me too, like me, like me. Y'all don't understand. For those of y'all who have seen the side heifer married man saga series <laughs> that I've been putting out from week to week or however often I've been putting it out. If it wasn't for meditation and prayer, that heifer would have been stomped into the ground. Please believe, trust and believe meditation works. So anyway, he tried to get him to get down there meditating. So he's doing breathing exercise and all that stuff. So I'm here for that. Well, Nova, um, at the earlier, earlier in the episode, uh, we noticed that she had somebody to come out and put cameras up around her house after them people came to her, her house and dropped off something at her house last episode doing the most. So, oh boy, why I can't think, never think of the name of that uh, show? I'm going to do it right now. But old boy who has, you know, rolled up on her ever since he moved into the area, he rolled up. He was like, are you okay? Because he could tell because she was just outside just smoking. <laughs> She was oh hit the floor. I was about to look it up, y'all. I finally remember. I don't like, I really don't like looking stuff up, but this was about to get on my nerves. I could not remember where I knew that man from. But the man who rolled up on her was from the TV show Hit the Floor. He was a basketball player on there, whatever. Um, so he rolled up and he was like, Is it that bad? And so she was like, Yeah. And you know, it just is what it is. And he was like, Well, um, just let me know when you are getting home. I know sometimes you get home late and it's dark. I'll gladly come and walk you the rest of the way home and all this other stuff. And so she was like, you know what? I actually might take you up on that because I do feel some type of way at times. Well, she in the middle of a conversation and the black police officer who is a part of the, uh, anti-racist stuff that is going on within the department, you know, he's one of the ones who has agreed to talk to her. They have found out about his involvement and they ain't here for it. And since most of the force is white, they are probably going to try him. I hope this man will come up missing. I can't, like, I really cannot do it. Please don't let this man come up missing. Please, Ava DuVernay, don't do it. So anyway, he came to warn her and was like, I think you should get out of town and lay low and all this other stuff. She was like, I'm not leaving my home, but thank you for giving me a heads up. But this man that took off work, so he could take him a couple of days or a couple of weeks and try to see if it'll die out a little bit because the people is setting it off and they they try to knock doors down and doing the most and they tired of him going around and you know basically being here for you know the being on the side of right. Y'all want to be racist and y'all want to be trash and he's trying to uncover 
all of the foolishness that y'all have going on, but you mad. Stop being trash. You ain't got to be mad. Stop being trash. Y'all, so with the excavation that's going on that they trying to get done at uh, Ralph Angel's house, they been sitting up here setting it off. So he felt like they was trying him and they trying to ruin crops or something. And so when he went out there and addressed the folks, he asked them what was they doing. He was like, y'all getting too close to my mama grave. That's disrespectful. And that ain't nowhere where y'all supposed to be able to go. That ain't a part of what's in the warrant. So I'm going to need for y'all to show some respect and get it right, get it right, get it right, get it tight, all of that. So he was about to be on his way back to the house, but he had a little baggie in his pocket and he ended up dipping up some of his soil. So he ended up calling this dude named Benny, who, by the way, is fine. I don't know who Benny is, but the dude who playing Benny, Benny, you fine. You was fine through the phone. I was like, woo, child, I can imagine what you look like in real life. You was fine. Nah. So anyway, he was like, I got a soil sample for you. I need you to test it because their cane has not done well, like at all. And he tried to figure out what it was. It set it off last year. It was just the most that was going on that, you know, prevented them from getting certain things to the mill on time and all this other stuff. You know, people kept blocking stuff. The Landry's got something to do with it, all this other stuff. After he done got it tested, excuse me, and sent back, he finds out that they trying to test this gangster. The pesticide levels are ridiculously high. And he was like, somebody crazy or careless. And I know that you are neither one of those, Ralph Angel. So he already know that the Landry's has something to do with it. And they got other people out here doing things. These people out here going to certain spots. And doing the most and putting all kinds of ridiculous pesticides in it right now and probably have been doing it all along. And that's why his crop is doing nothing this year, this season. So Ralph Angel is just like my daddy. Listen, if this was happening to my daddy on our land, my daddy would have politely pulled up a chair as well and sat up there and watched them folks because it's his land. Do what I want to do. They really tried to tell him, oh, you're on a crime scene. He was like, this is my land. I do what I want to do. I walk where I want to walk. Who are you? You don't tell me. So anyway, um, Ralph Angel sat out there all night. Y'all, wait a minute. I got I to gotta go back for a second. When they first got to the house and that raggedy sheriff that we've been seeing this entire time was the one to present him with the warrant. Darla came outside. She had put on a robe and everything. If Darla hadn't have been standing there... I think Ralph Angel would have been in jail. He looked over at Darla. Darla said, Ralph Angel, please come into the house. All I saw was pregnancy. I think I think he looked at her and was like, man, if I ain't had my child on the way. <laughs> I really feel like if Darla wasn't pregnant, he still might have did a little bit more than what he did, which was he balled up the warrant and threw it at the uh, sheriff. Sheriff laughed it off or whatever. I'm glad he didn't try him for that. Because I was like, boy, if you don't calm down, this man will shoot you up in front of your house and say he provoked me and get away with it. And then end up getting a pension and all this other stuff after it's all said and done. And your family ain't going to get nothing in the end except burying you in mobiles and dead. So anyway, y'all, tired of my spirit. He was out there literally all night. So before nightfall, Nova went over there. She was like, oh, somebody told me that all these people was out here. Da, 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 da. He had to tell her, it's because of you, because of what you put in the book. And they were like, she was like, well, this is just things that, that you know, I was, you know, told. But I, you know, nobody ever confirmed that these were things that actually happened. These were things I was dreaming. And it was like, well, because of what you put in the book, they over here. Then Hollywood and Vi came over there. And he was like, Vi, I'd have done a lot of things wrong in my life. But I ain't do nothing wrong this time. This was all Nova. I don't need no negativity. And they were like, look, we ain't come over here for all that. We family. We love each other. We're going to be here for you no matter what. Child, these people done found a human bone. And I'm like, somebody please do something. That sheriff was so happy to hear that they, that they had found a bone. He was like, well, it looks like there wasn't a whole bunch of nothing in that book. There that mu that must have been some truth to that book. I was like, oh, my gosh. Ooh. Ooh, child. I can't. It's just too much going on, Lord. And Darla, you know, before all this happened, she was like, I know you don't want to hear this, but when I was in school, I never finished. But there was money set aside for me to go to school, and I checked, and there's money still in that account. We need that money. We're already in debt and all this other stuff. He was like, I'm not totally against it, but I just want you to give me a little bit more time. And she was like, I just don't want us to fall further into debt, and then it's too late and all this other stuff. And he ain't here for it, so... 
we're going to see how that go. But anyway, thank y'all for tuning in. Please subscribe if you have not done so. Like this video. Comment down below. All right. I'll see y'all later on. Bye.